During World War II, the Wehrmacht sent messages over the radio, singling out a few men of the millions serving, and it was the highest honor any soldier of any rank could receive. Throughout the entire conflict, only one non-commissioned officer of the German tank arm was named in the Wehrmacht radio communique, Kurt Knispel. Although he was the best Panzer ace, with a reported 168 tank kills, he never received the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, despite being recommended four times. Knispel had a knack for breaking the rules, sported long hair and a beard, and had a particular disdain for abusive SS officers, which earned him more than a few enemies within the ranks. Even so, he's widely considered the most successful tank ace of World War II, and yet the affable rule breaker is also the most forgotten Panzer ace of them all. A Prodigy into Action When Sudetenland, today part of the Czech Republic, was occupied by Nazi Germany on October 1st, 1938, Kurt Knispel was only 17 years old. From a young age, Knispel became enamored with the automobile industry and loved working on mechanized machines and vehicles. Then, in 1940, he joined the Heer Wehrmacht forces. Knispel started his basic training at the Panzer Replacement Training Battalion in Sagan, Lower Silesia, and his favorite lessons were those related to armored warfare in some of Germany's most impressive tanks, like the Panzer I, II, and IV. The young man was then transferred to a field unit of the 12th Panzer Division, where he completed his training as a loader and gunner on the Panzer IV. And while his superiors immediately noticed his extraordinary abilities as a gunner, Knispel remained a loader. As part of the Wehrmacht's Army Group Center, the 12th Panzer Division joined the battle against Soviet Russia in June of 1941 as part of Operation Barbarossa, when Nazi Germany invaded the territory. By July, Still in Soviet territory, and with Knispel's Panzer tank damaged beyond repair, his unit was transferred to Army Group North, and the men set course towards Leningrad. That is when Knispel and his Panzer IV tank were suddenly hit by a Soviet shell. While the entire crew jumped out of the hit tank, Kurt Knispel stayed inside. Determined, he looked through his periscope, spotted the enemy's T-34 tank, and destroyed it. It would become the first tank to be knocked out by Knispel's sharp eye. After months of fighting, Leningrad remained in Soviet hands. During the operation, the 29th Panzer Regiment suffered dearly, and the 9th Company was merged with Knispel's 3rd. Knispel then met Obergefreiter Alfred Rubel, a fearless tank commander who became close friends with him. According to Rubel, Knispel never abandoned his comrades, even in the most challenging situations. Not on my watch. On May 17, 1942, Knispel and his unit returned to Germany. Upon arriving in the motherland, a brand new Panzer IV tank, installed with a long barrel 75mm gun, was awaiting both Rubel and Knispel. During a short leave, the men learned that their unit would be attached to the 3rd Abteilung, Panzer Regiment 4 of the 13th Panzer Division. While the majority of the newly reformed unit was already on its way to Ukraine, Rubel and Knispel had to wait a few days to get used to their new vehicle. Then, on the way to their latest mission, their train was stopped in Krakow, Poland. Out of nowhere, Knispel heard cries and yelling in Russian and immediately rushed to the scene, where he found a Soviet prisoner being mistreated and abused by a Schutzstaffel guard. With a pistol in hand and a furrowed brow, Knispel intervened and got into an altercation with the SS guard. Soon, the outspoken young soldier fell out of grace with the German military police and army. And while his commander would constantly stick up for him during his service, Knispel would be repeatedly denied medals and recognition, not to mention moving through the ranks. The truth is, Knispel was a born rule breaker. With tattoos, a goatee, longer than allowed hair, and a strong distaste for injustice, he was not just another soldier and clearly stood out from the crowd. Even so, he was well-liked by his comrades, and his skills were never matched.
road to Kursk. Knispel and the rest of his unit arrived in Ukraine on August 4, 1942, joining the 4th Panzer Regiment in action in the Caucasus Mountains, a small region between the Black and the Caspian Seas. During the battles there, Knispel added 12 more tanks to his kill list, finally earning some official recognition, getting promoted to Unteroffizier and receiving the Iron Cross second class. He was also among the few lucky soldiers to man the new Tiger I tank. After a Christmas break, Knispel was placed in the first company of the Schwerer Panzer Abteilung 503 Heavy Tank Battalions. Then, in the spring of 1943, Knispel and his new unit set course towards the east to participate in Operation Zitadel. Also known as the Battle of Kursk, the operation was one of the largest and most significant tank battles in history. One hell of a gunner. Beginning on July 5, 1943, Knispel and the Heavy Tank Battalion 503 were tasked with opening up the roads for the 6th Panzer Division on the right flank of the massive Operation Zitadel, and he successfully eliminated several anti-tank positions. Knispel was on a roll. Two days later, he managed to destroy a Soviet T-34 almost a mile away in a single shot, destroying seven more the next day, with a few as far away as 1.25 miles. Then, when his platoon bumped into a Soviet column of 14 tanks, the Germans opened fire and destroyed 11 in minutes. Knispel broke his own record on July 16th, when his platoon was tasked with helping a cavalry brigade from falling into Soviet hands, and he destroyed an enemy tank almost three miles away. For the next several months, the 503 Heavy Tank Battalion helped out several German units from being decimated by the Russians. During a nighttime mission, Knispel was positioned as a tank commander around Oswetz when he heard Soviet tanks closing in on their location. Then, when a third Tiger joined the party, all hell broke loose. During the kerfuffle, the German commanders lit the sky while trying to set the Soviet tanks ablaze. However, the battle was over when the third Tiger was hit by a T-34 and Knispel's engine overheated. Ultimately, Knispel destroyed a whopping 27 tanks during the Kursk campaign, and for his incredible actions, he received the Iron Cross First Class. More, more. As September of 1943 came to a close, Knispel had racked up 80 downed enemy tanks. In January, Knispel and the 34 Tiger tanks of the 503 Heavy Tank Battalion were integrated into the armored Kampfgruppe Becker and tasked with liberating men trapped at the Shikazi pocket. During the mission, the Tiger Group took out an astonishing 267 Soviet tanks. By spring, Kurt Knispel was destroying one Soviet tank after another, and his count surpassed 100 kills. He would then receive the German cross in gold. Days before the Allied invasion of Normandy in June of 1944, Knispel and his men returned to Germany, where they received the brand new King Tiger tanks, and the 503 were immediately sent to France to deal with the unstoppable Allied threat. Despite massive success on the Eastern Front, Knispel only destroyed two Allied tanks in Normandy, most likely because of the different nature of combat and the battlefield conditions. Then, as the battalion was sent back to Germany for one more reformation near the end of August, Knispel was granted a visit to his hometown. Even so, he was back on the battlefield by October, and he and his unit were sent to the outskirts of Skonemedi, Hungary, where he secured his 126th hit. His commander, Captain Dr. Dienst Kerber recommended him for the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross, one of four times Knispel's commanders did so throughout the war to recognize his outstanding courage, situational awareness, and superb handling of weaponry. However, he would never receive the prestigious award and would become an ace of aces without the Knight's Cross of the Iron Cross under his belt. Fall from Grace By 1945, the German stance in the war had alarmingly worsened. 
In Slovakia and Hungary, the Tigers of the 503 Heavy Tank Battalion suffered dearly, and by April, only eight of the 34 mighty German tanks remained, including Knispels. Even so, he would continue to rack up kills. As the end of the month approached, the remnants of the 503 were sent to Vlasitica, a town between Brno and Vienna, and Knispel was promoted to Staff Sergeant. He then departed for his last battle on April 28th. Knispel secured his 168th kill in German-occupied Czechoslovakia. By then, however, he was being overwhelmed by Soviet armor. Immobilized and encircled, his Tiger II received a decisive blow, and the legendary Kurt Knispel was mortally wounded. The 23-year-old soldier lost his life only a week before the war ended. Almost 70 years later, Czech archaeologists discovered 16 German soldiers buried on the church grounds of Verbovich. Identified thanks to his dog tags, the Ace of Aces found his final resting place in 2014. With 126 victories as a gunner and 42 as a tank commander, Kurt Knispel went down in history as one of the most successful ace tankers in the war. However, the soldier's name never became popular, mainly because he didn't get to write a memoir or because he fought for the wrong side of history. Even so, his talent could not be denied. Thank you for watching Dark Docs. For more compelling military content, check out the rest of our Dark Documentaries channels, where we delve into the fiercest battles in modern history and the groundbreaking technology that came with them. Stay tuned.